Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the inaugural show of Detox Me Now. It's going to be an inside look at the nutritional cleanse. And many of you have uh, seen us on Fresh Natural Live, which comes on Monday evenings at 7 o'clock. And this is our new show that's going to give you an inside look at a lot of the things that we talk about on the Fresh Natural Live show. And so the whole concept of Detox Me Now is where we will take you inside the lives of individuals who are actually going through a nutritional detox. Now, nutritional detox uh, means a lot of different things to a lot of people. In fact, the word detox means a lot of different things to a lot of people. And what we want to do is give you a lot of the scientific evidence. At Montgomery Heart and Wellness, we've been using nutritional detox for more than a decade. We've had thousands of our patients and wellness clients come through our clinic, and we've seen amazing clinical results by people just doing a simple nutritional detox. But what does it mean to do detox? You hear a lot of people talk about detox, detox. I did a detox. I'm going to do a cleanse and so on and so forth. And when I talk to a lot of our patients or just people in general, and they've done these detoxes, I hear a lot of different stories and a wide variety of things. Well, I did this and I took these herbs and I took these capsules and so on and so forth. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of break this down to you. We're going to break it down to you from a scientific standpoint. We're going to talk to you about it from a tactical standpoint. But we're also going to take you into the lives of individuals who are doing it. So this inaugural show, the inaugural show is very special. Uh, I started working with uh, some friends and colleagues, and you know we started talking. And I've been you know planning on doing a raw juice feast for a while, and I've been doing juice feasts for about seventeen years. And, you know, every one is a different experience. I've gone for as short as nine days, as long as 101 days, and it's always a new experience. So this year I was planning to do it. I haven't done one in a couple of years uh, or so. And, uh, you know, these detox, you have to get your mind right. You know, juice feasts, you have to get your mind right. Plan a time on a calendar, set a date. Uh, and so I was working out with my trainer, and I think she had been wanting to do a detox also. So she asked me, so, well, you know, you haven't done your detox this year. When are you planning? And so it had been in, on my mind. And so one part of me said, yeah, you know, I really need to do it. And you want to, you know, do it as a group. So, yeah. And so I called one of my colleagues, a little Fresh Natural Live. And, you know, we'd been talking about it off and on. And so, yeah, it's time to do the detox. And so I called a few people, friends and different people I knew who might be interested. And we got a group of about eight of us who are planning to do the detox together. I say planning to. We are actually into week one. So this is day five for us. So what we want to cover uh, today is the whole concept of nutritional detox. But this show, this initial series, is going to talk about the nutritional cleanse from the standpoint of a juice feast. Now, what is a juice feast? And a lot of people talk about juice fast and uh, people know about Daniel fast. And we use the word feast instead of fast because in my opinion, when you're eating at a higher level, when you're eating food that's a higher quality, it's more of a feast. You're feasting because even though you're leaving your chicken wings or your you know, favorite fried foods or pizzas or ice cream, whatever the case may be, when you're eating something that's of a higher nutritional value, in my opinion, it's truly a feast. And the stuff you're eating before was to fast. You were fasting yourself of nutrition, fasting yourself of healthy food, fasting yourself of nutrients that your body needs. But now you're consuming those nutrients and you're removing all those toxins. So this is more of a feast. So a juice feast, by definition, in my opinion, is nourishing your body at a higher level, more hydration, more micronutrients, more phytochemicals, et cetera, et cetera. So without further ado, with all that technical discussion and what have you, uh, I'm gonna bring our guest on today. So I'm, I'm very proud to announce um, let's meet our, I don't want to say contestants, but our Juice Feast, uh, my Juice Feast partners, if you will. Uh, many of you know uh, Dr. Celeste Palmer from Fresh Natural Live. Hello, Celeste. How are you doing today? Hello. Good. Good. And uh, another one of our Juice Feast partners is Miss Desiree White. Hello, Desiree. How are you doing? I think she's on mute. I'm doing well and energized. All right, good. So the delay, we got some. No, I'm not on mute. You can't hear me. Yeah, I can hear you now. There's a little bit of delay, but that's that, no. It's perfect now. It's perfect now. And uh, now we have a couple. Um, okay, great. And uh, you know we have uh, Sean and Taurus Brooks. We want to see. Um, so now you have the juice feast with a couple. So the the thing is to see if they stay married during the juice feast. <laughs> 
So that's one thing. <laughs> so, Sean and George Books, how are you doing? And of course, last but not least, the world famous Chef Babette. Chef Babette, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. Now, now, Chef Babette is featured in a juicing book. I don't have it in front of me, but you know, she wrote the opening of a juicing book. What's the name of that book, Chef Babette? Oh, you're talking about the Juice Guru book? The Juice Guru. Yeah. So, so Steve she's and Julie Prusak. Yes, yeah, so I guess that makes her Juice Guru. But either way, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but Chef is uh, well known from uh, stuff I eat uh, in California, and uh, she just made 35 years old and uh, looks every bit of 25 years old. And so uh, <laughs> Chef Babette would be juicing with us. So what I want to do tonight, we have our group here, and, and this is unlike our, our other show, Fresh Natural Live, because there are going to be some technical aspects of it. But I really want you to bring, want to bring you into the lives of everybody who's in the program and who's joining us. And I want us to kind of walk through this whole process. And feel free to ask questions and, and things of the like. But the key is how do you plan for a juice feast in that dreaded first week? And, and I'm just going to come up with some general comments in terms of a juice feast in the context of detox. And I just want to kind of get everybody's take on it. But first and foremost, when I do these any kind of detox, I've got to get my mind ready. And so the preparation for that detox is really mental first and foremost. And it's not like any other thing else that we do in life. You know, we'd be planning for a big performance. Uh, if you're an athlete planning for a competition, it's that mental preparation that's really important. And so with a juice feast, uh, you have to prepare because, you know, we're used to eating all the time. And so what I typically do when I'm getting ready for juice feast, I mark a day on the calendar. I say, okay, you know, a week out or two weeks out or three weeks out, whatever the case may be, uh, I'm ready to start juicing. So I may get some of my favorite foods out of the way. I mean, yes, they're my favorite salads and my favorite nori wraps, whatever the case is. But these foods that I chew, I get my chewing done because I say when I'm getting ready, uh, I get on the juice feed, so I'm ready to go. I typically don't eat a lot of junk food. I don't eat the worst stuff. I mean, I don't eat junk food normally. But I don't eat the worst things on my diet because I know that detox is going to be harder. But I still get my chewing out of the way. I still eat more raw stuff and so on and so forth in terms of getting prepared. So it's a mental preparation. I also get my juices ready the night before. Typically the day before, I'll stop eating. I try to stop eating around 2 o'clock. This time I didn't stop eating until about 4.30 or 5 because it was a, a very busy day. So it didn't go so well in that regard. Uh, but that was the preparation that I went through. And typically when I talk to people in terms of that preparation, I tend to say, do the same thing. Sort of get your mind ready, uh, plan what juices you're going to get. If you're going to juice yourself, come up with a strategy. I always say if you're going to juice yourself, have a backup plan to buy your juices from a certain place or multiple places just in case your juicer breaks or something happens, you're in the middle of the juicing. So so these are some of the basic things I did. So what I want to do, I want to kind of just kind of go around the room here and just see what uh, what what different people did. Sean, why don't you start off uh, and you and Taurus. I mean, what did y'all do to prepare uh, for the juice feast? And uh, what, what was your take on things? Um, well, basically what we did... <laughs> The, when when we discussed having it, it was probably the Thursday. I think it was like Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, when this idea came about um, prior to the Monday. So Monday was our start off. So Thursday, we started binge eating, I have to be honest. We had all these fruits, vegetables, things in the chips. Uh, we had the uh, avocado, um, what's it? guacamoles and everything. We ate. We ate all weekend. As a matter of fact, we ate until we didn't do two o'clock. I think our last meal was probably our last supper. We kept calling it our last supper. Our last supper was about nine o'clock at night. And um, honestly, I went into it thinking the worst. I thought it was gonna be dreadful, headaches, uh, stomach ache. I was prepared. I went to the store and I was like, okay, should I get some ibuprofen? What kind of medication do I need to get? So I went in dreading, honestly. I went in dreading, dreading the fact that I was going to be so hungry. Um, so I think Taurus was more strong-minded than me. How, how was your experience getting prepared for it? I was scared. I was nervous about it. 
for me, it was more of an excitement. I wanted to see what I was capable of doing mentally, in particular, just seeing was I strong enough to do it. Uh, but overall, I'm like, like Dr. Dr. Montgomery, I, I don't eat a lot of junk anyway. And uh, for me, it was right in line with what I do anyway. And, and I needed a good detox, so I was willing to do it. I, my motto was, you know, do it now, either, you know, spend the energy, spend the time now, or either spend it later inside the hospital, laid across the hospital bed. So I looked at it for an investment and uh, the night before. So what we did is we did bench, bench eat. And then at the end of the night, we decided to take up some uh, smooth moves mm -hmm. to get it back out of us so it won't be so hard on us the next day. But we just wanted to get, it was psychological. It was all mind games. It was mind games that we played with ourselves. We thought, you know, but now we realize that we didn't have to do all that. It wasn't, it's not nearly as bad as we thought. So that, that's great. So basically, <clears throat> the anticipation, a little bit of nervousness on your part, Sean, but getting into it, it was something that really kind of uh, wasn't as, it had more of a bark than a bite. That's right. right. Yep, yep. I've heard other people say that. Chef Babette, you're, kind of, you're a veteran at this. I mean, the first time we met, you had just finished doing the 30 Day Juice Feast. This is a number of years ago. Um, tell us, I mean, kind of not only gives you a technique here, but I mean, what have you done over the years? I mean, you're, you know, you just had your 70th birthday and it was like, you know, you're magical at this stuff. So kind of give us your preparation. Uh, you know, eating is eating and we're human. So <laughs> I don't care how long you've been doing it. You still, still want to chew. Um, so it, it does take some, some mind preparation. Plus I'm in the kitchen cooking food every day. <laughs> and so you know, it's challenging, especially when you have to taste and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's it's preparation. I agree. I probably got blueberries in my teeth. Um, no, we don't see them. <laughs> but it is preparation. That that is key. And and um, making sure that that because well, I believe in juicing. That's that's my thing. I like separating the pulp from the juice. Uh, but then sometimes I will treat myself and I'll take my my juice and I'll make myself some type of a, a frozen blended drink out of the juice that I've already juiced. And that works out because like I'll, my fun drink is going to be beets with pineapple, um, ginger, oranges. That is just an amazing drink. Oh, with yams. And um wow. <laughs> I, you know, I've juiced yams once before. Huh? I've juiced a yam once before. So you oh, juice yams regularly? You all you have to juice yams. If you got, yeah, I've done it before. Yams and apples with nutmeg. Oh, so delicious. Anyway, yeah. So then I'll blend that and just kind of mix it up so I'm not bored with it. Um. But yeah, it, it's all about preparation for me too. And it is a mind game. You really have to talk to yourself and make sure you're ready to, to go on. And now I've never done as long as yourself, Dr. Montgomery. I've never done that that length of time. But um, And a lot of times I'll just go straight hard fasting where I'm just doing the uh, lemonade, the lemonade uh, fast with the cayenne pepper. That was yeah. <clears throat> And, and the thing is that, I mean, you give some practical points and, and a lot of people wouldn't have realized that you can juice a yam. I've done it once. And it's actually pretty thick and filling. And so, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you can add some variety to it. You can do yams plus greens, a yam, plus, it sort of adds calories. So if somebody's doing a juice feast and let's say you're working out, you're trying to build muscle uh, or you're training for a marathon or whatever the case is, you can have, you know, a lot of these uh, types of foods that you juice and they add more calories and give you more uh, bulk and things for energy and so on. So so um, maybe somebody need to consider juicing a yam uh, one of these days. <laughs> Desiree, you're next up. What uh, what you're muted right now, Desi. Uh, what was your approach? Oops. You muted. She's frozen. Frozen. Uh oh. There you go. Uh oh. <laughs> You're back. I'm back. Okay. I kind of wing 
I did the opposite of Sean. I beat myself off. So I started slowly getting into the habit and the rhythm. One thing I find, too, is to make sure if I have everything available, that when I get an urge or hungry, I can just grab a bottle. I go buy it and look for it. That, that makes it challenging. Also, because my husband's not doing it and cooking, it's hard to cook without tasting it and, and the temptation. I'm no prep for the week. So I cook all the food for the week in one day. So all he has to do is go take it out and heat it up. So that keeps me out the kitchen. Oh, gotcha. But so yeah, far, the produce has been really good. So you send your husband away to eat. And that's, I mean, I mean, you raise a great point because a lot of this is strategy. So, you know, some people may be doing a juice feast and you're the only one in the house doing it. And, and that's been my lifelong experience. So I've been a juice feast and my whole family's eating regular food and I take my kids out, they're eating all sorts of junk. And so you have to kind of go through that. But if you have a way of avoiding those temptations, like you sent your husband away for, getting food out, then, then yeah, that's, uh, that's a good strategy to have, you know, as long as he's okay with that. <laughs> you preserve, preserve the relationship. Uh, Celeste, you, uh, you've you done juice feasting before and um, a while back, and I think you were talking about the peer pressure, but how did you prepare this time and, and, and how was it different than before? So this time I actually, so, you know, we talked about doing this, on the first and then also on the 15th and <laughs> i didn't really hear anything i was like oh we're gonna do it on the 15th so i was thinking we weren't gonna do it um so i was like okay we're good so i didn't really mentally i mean i didn't i really wasn't thinking about it um and then i think you sent something out and i was like oh okay let me get my mind right but that was like a day or so before so i was like okay let me get my mind right and so when everybody was going to the store, when we were on the call and everybody was in the store, I actually went, that was on Sunday night. I went to the store after we got off the call. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I'm, I've been wanting to do this with with someone for years. So it's not like I wasn't thinking. I, I actually had an injury a couple of years ago and, um, you know, I did. Well, one, the, the doctor wanted to do an injection and I did not want that. Um, so then the, the insurance wouldn't cover the MRIs. So anyway, I started doing alternative things and I was doing acupuncture and a whole bunch of other stuff. So one day something just said, just stop eating. But this, and I, and I basically had, I don't know if I had a, a nerve uh, pinch or what was going on, but this whole side was frozen. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I just, one weekend, I just did a fast. And by Monday, I could actually move this arm again. And it had been like a week of me not being, a, being able to move the arm. So I don't know what the magic was, but I was like, okay, I need to do this probably for a longer period of time. But I only did that two days because I had to go to work on Monday. And I was like, I don't, I, you know, the stress and I find myself stress eating. So I said, you know, I'll do it in the future. So it's been several years that I say, I have been saying I need to do it again. And that's why I mentioned it to you. We were kind of like, yeah, we need to do it. So it's very helpful for me to do it with a group um, because I've been thinking about it for years. Wow, so, so the mental preparation was kind of last minute. And you know, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, having some uh, soreness or musculoskeletal issues because typically those things are inflammatory. And, um, you know, Marvin Brown asked the question, uh, has a detox program been beneficial for those who might have myocarditis? And what I, what I will say is that I have not specifically treated somebody with myocarditis with a juice fees. Uh, we have had people with myocarditis who go on a nutritional detox and get some improvement. Now, there's no study showing that but that's anecdotal. So when I answer that question, I say, yeah, I've seen it happen with patients before, but I don't have any case series or studies that I've published or anyone else has published that I know of. But knowing that this program decreases inflammation, uh, I can honestly say that because myocarditis is due to inflammation and this program de detox decreases inflammation, is a good chance that it likely decreases or, or has an effect on myocarditis. But I don't like to say outright it does until I actually see it in that specific condition. And you know, in medicine people tend to be myopic, even though 
all these diseases are very similar. Well, if it's you know not labeled this, then we got to study something that's labeled this. But the answer probably is likely yes, it does. Uh, and I think that's really important. What, what I want to do is kind of share with the audience, you know, some information we had on our um, uh, detox me now. And, and there's some interesting quotes from you know, health care healthcare practitioners many years ago, and, and some of them philosophers and all. But, you know, they said some interesting things and I dug some of these up offline. I've had them before in my files. And uh, <clears throat> this is by a Greek physician, uh, Athenius. Fasting cures disease, dries up bodily humors, put demons to flight, get rid of impure thoughts, make the mind clear, the heart pure, the body sanctified, and raise man on the throne of God. Uh, this is uh, Herbert Shelton. Herbert Shelton's a, you know, a, I think he's a PhD, who wrote books on juice feasting. The weaker the patient, uh, the greater the need to do nothing. And yet it's precise at such times that uh, heteropaths, doctors like me, all cults seek to do the most, whether it's surgery or pills or whatever the case is. Uh, the more you feed a sick man, the more you harm him. Hippocrates says that. Uh, man is the only animal that eats when sick. Continuous eating is uncomfortable in fever or in pain. Bodies uh, builds chronic disease. It is the most rigidly enforced laws of the wild to never eat when sick. That's Herbert Shelton again. And when a patient is so weak that he's unable to turn in bed, possibly in severe pain, and with fever, there's no power to digest food. So the thing, what I want to point out here is simply the fact that it's been known for a long time that when we get sick, the ideal thing to do is to fast, to, to eat less. And not that any one of us are quote unquote sick, but eating, fasting is a healing process and it has uh, an impact on how well we feel. And, and you know, Celeste shared that with us. I, anybody else who's had, I mean, who owns a dog, by any way? By the way, I mean, who has owned a dog? I've never owned a dog. People I know have owned dogs say that, you know, when a dog gets sick, they fast or they eat, drink, you know, eat grass and drink water. It's true. Uh, and so, you know, with the human beings are the one, only ones that try to eat when we're sick. And so that's kind of the problem that we have. So I don't know, anybody with any other ailments that you've treated with uh, uh, a detox and gotten better of any type? Chef Babette, you might have had some experience with, in your history. I mean, what, I mean, you've detoxed a number of times, not just juice feasting, right? Well, you know what I uh, really remember um, uh, when, whenever I've done the uh, lemonade fast, um, that one really, really, really gets rid of all, <laughs> seems to get rid of so much of the mucus, the inflammation in the body. It's just amazing. After a while, it's like your senses are opened up. You can smell every single thing. It's it's really amazing. It's really amazing. You almost don't even want to eat again because you feel like you're going to mess everything up. Um, but yeah, I, 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 um, I enjoy it after, huh? Is that the master cleanse? The master cleanse. Okay. Yeah. You've okay. done that one? No, I've read about it. You should. Yeah. That one is incredible. It really is. It, it just, it, it just takes you to a different place. It makes you feel so different. And, and okay. to see, see how you can really flush yourself out with the salt water enemas, um, you know, at, in the morning. It's just incredible. It's an incredible cleanse. However, you have to be extremely careful coming back to eat because you can put on more weight because it will take you down to where you should be. It's going to help you get rid of the, the waste. But you will put on some weight if you come back from that cleanse too quickly because you're literally drinking uh, lemons, water, and a syrup. And cayenne pepper, right? Is it cayenne pepper with it? Yes, thank yeah, cayenne, cayenne pepper. pepper. That's what that's what really works and gets rid of all the inflammation. As a matter of fact, right now I'm having an um, an issue with my my eyes tearing very badly, and um, I started using uh, Dr. Schultz's um, uh, um, I think it's Eye Bright, and uh, washing my eye. I didn't have cayenne pepper in it. So you can just imagine. Oh, wow. that's like. However, it's really, it's really helping. And it's, I've only done it two days because I went on a photo shoot 
a few weeks ago and my eye teared so badly on some of the photos, you can see the, <laughs> the tear drop. So this thing is really, the cayenne pepper is incredible, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Not good for the eyes stuff. though, right? Huh? Not good for the eyes, right? <laughs> but no, it seems like it's really going to help the eyes. Okay. Get rid of some of the inflammation. Boy, sounds kind of hot. Um, well, what is uh, what has your first week been like, uh, Celeste? What's so the dreaded first week? We want to get into that phase of things. So we kind of went through the preparation, but this dreaded first week. So what what is that like? So my goal this time was, you know, to stay active. So, you know, I, I can, which before when I did a um, juice fast, I did not stay active because I was, it was about 11 years ago. So this was when vegan and juicing was not in style. And so a lot of people were questioning me about what, why are you doing this and what's going on? So I was like, maybe I shouldn't work out and maybe I shouldn't do th these things. But this time I'm like, I'm going to keep doing everything that I do. So this week I kept, you know, I went to the gym and did my normal routine, go to my classes and went to work. Um, just want to keep the rhythm of what I normally do. Um, and so it, it it's, it's worked out. I'm mo honestly, most days I come home and go to sleep. So around nine, I go to sleep because I want to chew on something and that you know, I can't do. I'm normally a late night person. I usually go to sleep around like 12. Um, don't ask me what I'm doing. I just, I don't know. But now I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to sleep. And so, um, but the first two days I was feeling a little bit fatigued, a little bit tired, like dragging a little bit. Um, day three, which I was anticipating being a bad day, actually wasn't that bad. So my energy started to kind of, the fatigue started to pull away. Some. So it's just, you know, it's just been a slow. I just truly miss the snacking, the chewing, the snacking stuff. But <laughs> um, get me on that. Yeah, that's certainly that's certainly been my my whole deal. All right, all right, Sean. I want to hear the oh god. You've been checking okay. a lot of interesting stuff with me. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm just gonna be frank, I'm a foodie. I'm a fat girl and a little girl's body. I am a foodie, so I miss my food. And every day, I've been like, okay, day one, day two. And I think because Celeste told me prior to the starting, day three was going to be terrible. So day three was horrible for me. <laughs> I think put in my mind, day three is the worst day. Oh. <laughs> so day three was, day three was every day. I mean, well, I say that to say, I think I'm putting in my, Taurus tells me, you say, you're putting it in your head that you want to eat. I want to chew. And I'm, I'm staying busy. I'm working. And unlike Celeste, I'm, I during the preparation, I decided not to work out. Again, dreading the fatigue that I thought I was going to have. So I said, I'm not going to work out. I don't want to strain my body on anything extra. So all I do is work, drink my juice, come home, go to bed. I don't even want to watch commercials because it seemed like everybody's eating something. And I'm like, I don't want to eat. I don't want to tempt myself. But I think my body goes into spurts, meaning there are times when I'm super hungry. Like, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm so hungry. And I'm like, man, let me go and try drink this juice. And I'll sip on it. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And I'll zip, drink that juice. And I'll sit there for a minute. And it'll pass. So... It's just a roller coaster ride. I think if I just, just, and that's why I have it always. I always have a bottle next to me. I think if I just have my ready made juices next to me, I'll be okay. But it's definitely a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster. Um, I don't see an increase of energy. However, uh, I work, what, 15 hours a day, Monday through Thursday. So, we're pretty good, but when I go to bed, I go to bed. As soon as my nine o'clock, I am in bed, and I wake up the next morning very refreshed. I mean, and insomnia was a problem for me. Like I could never sleep throughout the night. But since I've been on this juice feed, I have definitely been able to. I mean, my bed has never felt so good. Like never. I love it. I love just taking a shower and going straight to bed. So I sleep all night. What about you? Uh, for me, mine's been 
totally the opposites of Sean's. Uh, mine's been pretty smooth, pretty smooth for me. <laughs> Hadn't had any side effects, uh, any things of that nature. Uh, I started out, I think the first day I had to consume more. Uh, I've learned over the last couple of days that my intake is actually lessened. Don't need as much. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it was from the smooth move from the first night, clearing everything out uh, or what. But I, I've noticed now that I don't, it don't take as many bottles throughout the day. But what I have found is that for me, my energy level definitely went up. Uh, I have definitely more energy. Uh, I do find myself like everyone else, though, at the end of the night, I teach a class at night when I get off that Zoom I used to hang out and watch a little TV and things of that nature. I'm nope, nope, nope. I'm doing a lot of things to avoid putting myself in a bad position. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the things Sean and I did also is that we cleared the refrigerator out. We took everything, we have an outdoors refrigerator, so we took everything that we had that could go in that freezer, move it out and everything else, we just tried to eat it up before <laughs> or either, we just got out of sight, out of mind. And Sean, one of those that every time we pass a food truck or a billboard. So I do a lot of coaching. Sean motivates me to stay motivated so I can keep her motivated. You know, so we I spend a lot of time telling her, you know, a lot of things you are what you think. And I tell her it's all mental. When you think you're hungry, when you think you want this, you miss this, you will start to crave it. So I spend a lot of my time trying to be strong for the both of us. And uh and I'm hoping that if I keep doing, she'll hang in there as long as I hang. So I'm in for the long haul. So she's got to get tightened up and come on with it, okay? Joyce, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember when we started, we were talking to you and I was talking to Sean after you were there. And um, I remember hearing you on speakerphone and, and say, hey, we're going to do a juice feast. And um, and Sean said, oh, yeah, I want to do it. And, and you said right away, I'm going to do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have no hesitation, it seems. I mean, it's like, okay, yeah, let's just do it. And it seems like it's just smooth sailing. I don't know if I've met anybody to go through this uh, like I've seen you go through it. You were very confident at the very beginning, and it just seems like, you know, no bumps in a row. And that's really great. And, I, you know, it's, it's amazing to see how different people react to the same event. Because uh, I remember my first Juice Feast, I was excited about it, and I did it. But my first week was very, very tough. I mean, I had a lot of sinus drainage and all of that stuff. And I remember seeing patients. I think I went through about three or four boxes of Kleenex in a given day and because I was just draining a lot. And I think it was like day two or three on the detox. And, and I had some other little reactions as well. But that was the biggest reaction I remember. But, uh, but that's amazing to see how you've gone through it pretty smoothly. And that's really good. And some people may have the detox reaction week two or week three or something like that. But but it just goes to show that our bodies react differently and it's no way to really to really predict that. So so this is uh this is really good. One of the other things too, Dr. Montgomery. I do find sometimes though that I do feel a little dehydrated. So I drink I find myself taking a big in, intake of water. Yep. I drink a lot of water. Yeah. It caused me to you know, I'm in and out the restroom, yeah. but I'm drinking a lot more water than, and I'm, I'm going to the restroom a lot more than normal. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, when you when the only thing you have to do is drink, you drink more and you hydrate yourself more. And see, one thing we do when we eat the regular diet, and I say regular diet, even a, a health, a quote unquote healthy plant based diet. If you're satisfying your stomach and your your insides by eating, say, some solid food, maybe I eat a vegan whatever. But that vegan whatever, maybe it's not very hydrating. Maybe it's a vegan casserole or vegan, you know, beet burger or whatever. But it's not very hydrating. But it fills you up. You may not drink as much because you're relying on that to fill you up. And and the number one nutrient is water. And hydration is key. And there are a lot of benefits to a juice feast. And we say, well, you may be taking fewer calories. You can consume 3,000 calories a day on a juice feast. I know it because I've done it before. And uh, as Chef Babette pointed out, you can juice a yam or sweet potato, and that'll give you a lot of carrots. But what the benefit of this is, as you pointed out, you're drinking more. Whether you're drinking more water or drinking more juice, you're hydrating yourself more. And that greater hydration 
uh, is really a benefit because we tend to, some of the, a guy wrote a book on you're not, his title of the book is that you're not sick, you're thirsty. And a lot of our illnesses are founded in dehydration. And so even though the foods we may be eating, a lot of it may be quote unquote healthy in a way that it doesn't have toxins in it, but a lot of the food, solid food, especially it's cooked, uh, it lacks water. And so a lot of times we don't drink enough water and nice thing about a juice feast, if you, if all that you eat is what you're drinking, then that's the critical thing. So I thought that's a good point to raise about drinking more and so on and so forth. Shepard, what has your first week been like? Uh, it's been pretty good. I've been busy. Um, now I get up at, I get up at usually between two and two thirty in the morning. So um, I crash pretty early. So it's really, really pretty easy for me because I'm up super early. I get a little 30, 40 minute workout in. I hit it to work and I work all those hours standing on my feet and moving. Uh, of course, I'm right there with a big industrial juicer. So it, all the juice that I need and all the produce and everything I need is right there. So I can replenish as often as I, I need. So it, it, it's it's not really challenging for me. Um, so um, and then I come home and usually like I can pass out at six. I can pass out at 545. Anyway, I pass out. But I'm up at two. Y'all probably still sleep. <laughs> I don't want to feel embarrassed about that. I, I, um, I, I've got a text message from you. And it was like it's like. 3, 4 a.m. my time, 2 a.m. your time. So. And I'm thinking everybody else should be up. Um, so, yeah, like it's it's getting towards my bedtime right now, you know. So <laughs> if I look a little worn out, it's because I got this tear, the teary eye. And, <laughs> and then I'm sleepy, so. <laughs> but oh, it's wow. fine, doctor. You know, and you, you you guys, you really have to, especially for people that are new doing this, you kind of have to sit and tell yourself, if, if say, for instance, you're 30 years old, how I've been on the planet 30 years and they never really cleaned my insides. You got to kind of, you really kind of got to think about that. You bathe yourself every single day, but how often do you cleanse the inside of your body? It's just mandatory. You you just have to do it. And you, you kind of have to just get over the eating thing and know that like you count them days down, I think that's good. I used to do that too. And you just know after them number of days, pretty soon you're gonna be able to eat again. So but you, but you know, I you know, you raise a great point, cleaning out your inside, because I remember <clears throat> so <laughs> I remember a guy, so we used to hold these little um uh, events at our office and, and they were like open houses and we would talk to people about our wellness programs and all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, in our main uh, waiting room, there's a bathroom because, you know, patients come in that kind of, we break that waiting room down like a little auditorium. There's a bathroom at the back of the waiting room and so on and so forth. So I remember, you know, we were at, we did the little presentation and we kind of broke and we're mingling and talking and, um, you know, one of the guys that were there had gone to the bathroom. And um, now maybe a, a few minutes after he shut the door, it's not that I was paying attention, but we were just talking. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, this foul odor just woof. I mean, just came over the room. And it's all like somebody kind of just kind of woof, blew a big gas of foul, you know, maybe a, 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 it's almost like a monster did a massive fart. <laughs> right in the room. And, and it was just, I mean, like super funky. No, seriously. I mean, it's like, you know, so we've been invaded by the super funk, you know. And so, and then, so I say, whoa. And then, you know, after I got that super funk hit, then, then I heard a, a toilet flush. And so, so the guy walks out of the bathroom and it's like, whoa. <laughs> and, um, now he was a you know thin muscular guy healthy looking and uh you know we clearly knew what happened and it's almost like that funk came out of there and said hey you about to come out <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like whoa what, what, what's going on so you know with the point you made cleaning yourself out Oftentimes we don't realize, and you know, people put all perfume and makeup and stuff like that 
and and uh, you know discharges, you know, so, and you know, I don't want to get into all about business. But, you know, women's discharges or men bowel movements, y'all, different things, your sweat glands, how you, all that's related to what's inside of you. And so, if you're putting dead animal flesh on inside of you on a regular basis, a toxic waste, then what's happening is that that stuff is building up and putrefying. And then, so, and some people, you know, they have a bowel movement, you got to fumigate the neighborhood. And so this was an example where <laughs> this person had not cleaned himself out. Now he may be physically fit, he exercised and all that, but he's loaded with toxins. And so this whole clean out flushing is really important from a health standpoint, because you don't want to be walking like a human graveyard. Because, you know, most people eat out of morgues, they don't eat out of kitchens, and I'm going to be too graphic, but it's really important if you eat these foods that you clean yourself out periodically. So that's a great point in terms of cleaning yourself out. So, so. also, Doc, also, mm -hmm. can I just say, huh? um, you know, I don't even wear, I don't even have to wear deodorant anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I, I got uh, really, really, really involved in food combining, making sure that the foods that I combined together were not going to rot inside of me. Yep. And that creates a lot of foul order, odors, too, from your mouth, from your body, parts, all of that. And if you learn to combine your foods properly, um, and, and I don't know, you guys probably know that, but there are so many people walking around with, they have to, they have to medicate themselves after they eat. It, it, there's absolutely no reason that the human, anybody, but <laughs> part of the human species should have to take medication after you eat to digest your food. That just does not make sense. But you're, you're a human. There's a diet, a specific diet for the human species as I don't know what other species medicates themselves after they eat. Do you? I mean, nope. that, that's, that's it's because we, we eat everybody's diet in one sitting and we eat all these different, we eat proteins, carbohydrates, we eat fruit, we eat sugars, we eat all this stuff on one plate. And then you wonder why you bloat and you have acid reflux and you need tums and you need and all this stuff, as Doc said, begins along with the animal flesh begins to putrefy in the system and it rots. And that's what old boy in the bathroom did. He yeah, he was rotten. <laughs> Unleashed the grave. He was, you know, all the dead corpses uh, came out of his gut and so on. Dr. So Dr. Chairman, can I add to something from a pediatrician standpoint. Uh -huh. So also a lot of parents are um, complaint, letting me know and complaining now that some of their young children, the five, four, um, six year olds, that they have an odor and they're starting to use deodorants on these young children because, you know, there's an odor. And, you know, they I talk to them about the diet and I just, you know, for the starting of everything, I just tell them to pull out dairy for me so that we can you know, do that for a week and you will be able to tell a difference. And in most cases, they are able to tell a difference just by pulling out Gary. It's, it's amazing, it's amazing. Desiree, how was your first week? My first week has gone well. Um, COVID didn't come through as far as being able to work from home. However, it brought out a lot of bad habits. So I've been wearing sweats and comfortable clothes every day which um and eating bad eating very bad um when you're home all day the snacks are there so i i don't ever remember um eating potato chips like i have been doing over the past year all day every day watching tv um so i picked up a lot of bad habits and with that not feeling well you know it's allergic i eat and i'm i'm sleepy I, if, once i eat i go to sleep so that means i'm napping three times a day which means I'm not as productive as I was before. Before COVID, I was working out three to four times a week. So on top of the eating, now I'm not working out. So you see, I've got my little COVID fat. My, I call it my COVID baby look now. <laughs> so mentally, I am tired of feeling tired. And I can't go up on weight anymore because I probably won't be able to, be able to fit any more of my clothes. <laughs> So, so the timing was right. It's been for you. really an experience for me. I feel clean. Timing was right. I feel energized. I feel clean. I feel good. So I'm having a great experience from this. 
<clears throat> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, that's the other thing too. A lot of us, you know, it's <clears throat> it's good to come because you know we go through a lot. And and I remember going through a period of time, you know, similar to what Desiree was pointing out, where you know life gets in the way, and so you you know you work in long hours. I remember you know I didn't have a lot of help at the office. I was working long hours and and not working out and so on and so forth. Oftentimes you may be eating late, you know, so even if you may be eating the right thing, you may be eating late at night or whatever the case is. And and these little cleanses help break the monotony of that. And, and you know, we don't all have perfect lives, things in a way. The other thing with the cleanse does, it'll break the monotony of, of you know, uh, poor lifestyle due to circumstances. But what it does, it also helps you uh, situate yourself and prepare for the next time the, the next crisis come. You're better, Abe. You're better. You have. You're. You're better prepared. Uh, and when I'm going, and one thing I said to people, whenever I'm going to a juice feast, because every year I've done it over the years, I always calculate. Okay, coming out of this juice feast, how am I going to be different? I mean, because I've got to come out of this unchanged. So what have I done in the past to to, to improve going forward? Now, as I think I, I was talking this last the other day, I'm gonna try to do like 90% raw coming out. And stick to that. Remove starch. Remove. Co- so there's certain things I'm 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 planning. I've got a strategy uh, as I come out uh, of the juice feast uh, in terms of making it better. So you always want it to be a stepping stone to a better way of eating because the next time you do it, you're going to do something even better. And so over time, if you do these intermittent detoxes, you're getting better all along. And so it's all about getting better because as we get older, we want to clean up our diets and clean up our systems. Uh, and 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 kind of improve things along the way. Any other comments on that? Marvin has another question. Are there any certain detox programs that are better at aiding the body with elimination of toxic waste, juice, lemon, or water fast? You know, I like the juice feast better than the water fast. I've done water fast up to six and a half days, and it's actually a good detox, and I think it benefits a lot of people, but the juice feast is probably the most powerful one, most aggressive type of detox you can do and still go about your normal life. If you do a water fast for more than seven days, even up to seven days, you're gonna have to be at home all the day. And a lot of people do water fast, they go to facilities and they spend a week, 10 days, two weeks or whatever. Uh, or some people water fast up to 40 days at uh, you know the place in Santa Rosa, California, but they have to be in bed, they can't exercise. So it really takes away from your, your lifestyle. And some people have to do that. A juice feast, on the other hand, and what we're trying to demonstrate with our discussion tonight and in the future, I mean, we're going to work every day. We're doing our stuff and we're still able to juice feast uh, and it helps eliminate. So I would answer that question by saying the juice feast is number one and a raw food detox would be number two. Anybody else have a take on that in terms of, you know, what's the best way to detox? So that would be, that would be the, the, my take on this. So what I want to do is we start to kind of wrap up our conversation this evening. What What's, um, I'll go around the table again. You know, we're, we're on day five. We're heading into the weekend, getting into next week. Uh, what's on everybody's mind? What's your, what's your plan for moving forward? Uh, any key uh, juice. And, and let me kind of share my, I'll start off. And and so what I'm doing now in, in my previous juice feast, I would do a lot of fruit juices, you know, and in fact, the first one did a lot of fruit juices. And then over time, I tried to do more vegetables. So the very first juice feast, I did all fruits and then one vegetable juice. That was like my, you know, because I have to do one today as my mentor. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do a majority of vegetable juices and minimal to no fruit juices. Now, most of my juices have either all veggies, vegetables and one fruit, like you know, this super juice has uh, apples, carrots, beets, spinach, lemon, and turmeric. Now, you can argue the carrots and beets are kind of starchy-like, uh, but there's only one fruit and the rest veggies. Uh, this is a custom juice I have, uh, cayenne, ginger, there's a cucumber, ginger, mint, kale, lime. It has one fruit, pineapple, collard greens, and lemon. <clears throat> now, I do have some other juices that are all veggies. So what I'm trying to do and to move into next week, do more all veggie juices, 
and hopefully by the by you know into the second month, I may be all veggie juices and maybe a rare juice that has a fruit in it. And then toward the end, whenever that's going to be, I want to get into some more bitter juices. So my strategy moving forward is to move to more veggie juices and to change my taste buds. That's kind of where I am. Um, Sean, let me hear from you and Taurus. What, what's on your mind? You have a strategy, a game plan for moving. You know, this is the first quarter. Maybe that's next week's the second quarter. Yeah. For, for me, uh, I think that I've been treating it like dependency, like substance abuse, actually. You know, I have to stay away from certain people. <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole lifestyle change going through this process. You know, TV shows are different. We don't watch TV nearly as much. You know, that can become anything that can be a trigger, anything that can make us want to use. So it's not just the diet. It's a whole lifestyle change for us. And overall, it feels better. We're actually talking more. You know, we spend time together more. Now we go sit on the porch where we used to go outside and cook certain things. You know, it's just a whole lifestyle change. So I spend a lot of my time, you know, just trying to, for the next couple of weeks, just trying to stay straight and trying to keep Sean intact. You know, uh, uh, trying to get her to keep her head straight, stay away from certain people, stay to keep the negativity down. Because I know if she were to go to the grocery store, and bring that food in the house, it will be a little effect on me. So I, I do all that I can to help her. I'm doing a lot of coaching, uh, uh, definitely, you know, telling her, hey, don't call that particular person. You know, what time of day is it? You know, we try to not, you know, go certain directions, even when we go to the store, try not to pass all the restaurants. It's just a whole commitment of trying to keep, keep focused, you know. It was a whole lifestyle change for us. Yeah. Wow. wow. Same thing. So Desiree, what's your strategy going into next week? Again, um, being prepared, having my juice already ready, um, my tea are all lined out. So as soon as I get the urge of, that I feel hungry, it's already easy to grab. And I like a challenge. So, I mean, really, this isn't a challenge, like I said before, because all that eating made me feel worse and had bad results. So I'm looking forward and I'm really excited about a uh, lifestyle, which this is a lifestyle, not a diet that is improving my health. Wow. Wow. So you had some momentum coming in. All right. So that's any, anything game plan? Are you going to change the uh, game plan? Are you going to stay with the same game plan as the first quarter? No, I'm going to, you know, I've been wanting to, I just haven't taken the time in this week to juice myself. Mm. Um, so, you know, I had, I want to get the organic, vegetables and fruits and so that way I know well as much as I can know um everything that's in I think I was questioning some of the dates on some of the juices that we um purchased and why we can how they can last for so long so just to take that question out of my mind um go ahead and do some myself yeah that's a good point I mean juicing yourself is ideal I've tried that I've just been a failure at it I just I'm not a natural juicer uh chef the bet is she juices just about all of her stuff herself and I mean one of these days I'll get to that uh point another 10 years perhaps I can come through and become a juicer. but I think that's a good strategy because the fresher the juice the better uh that's for sure all right, Chef, we want you to bring in the, the, the final leg. What's Well, basically, at 70 years old, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I don't care if I change my palate or not. I want, my juice. I want it palatable. I ain't going to drink it. It got to taste right to me. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to drink a glass of wheatgrass. If I want some wheatgrass, I'll juice me some wheatgrass. So you go on and change your palate, Doc. But I, I, uh, I'm putting some pineapple or something. Some oranges or something in mine. Mm -mm. Yeah. Better make it so you want to drink it. Doc, mm -hmm. have you sitting up here? Y'all have big old glasses of wheatgrass. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to get through the thing. You want to get through, you better make it taste good. You can make at least it taste good. At least that. You know what I'm saying? That's you true. Can make mine taste good. Look, try to meet and forget about Doc. If you ain't going to have to take your kind of stuff, I don't care. You better take some of the yams and the apples and some nutmeg. Child, that's a good drink right there. <laughs> uh, Roger, Roger, uh, edit that last <laughs> second. Thank you. Right, 
<laughs> so, you know, <laughs> she right, she right <laughs> No, that, that's, I'm that's, trying that's, to change my palate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Chef the Beck, we, we love you. And uh, you know, and, and you know, here's the thing. Now, <clears throat> you just had your 70th birthday, you had this wonderful bathing suit. You know, we why don't you lead us all in a 70-day juice feast? How about that? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I want to go 70 days. You ain't putting that on me. <laughs> uh -huh. I ain't that excited. No, no, I feel this neither. Huh? Your bathing suit, that was enough. I'm going to have to I might go two months with y'all and be like, I'm out. Well, look, if you go two months, that's 60 days. You'll be ashamed. Right. You should, yeah, you should do another 10 days. You go that long. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh boy, that's funny. Let's uh, catch a few more questions. We'll, we'll chime out. Uh, Marvin, we covered that one. Let's see here. Janice Wood says she's great. Uh, here's the um, do you add superfoods to your juices like burdock root, spirulina? Well, burdock root, you can you can actually juice the root. Spirulina, yes, you can. Chlorella, you can add superfoods. E3 Live, we do. Um, does it make a difference? You know, it can make a difference. I mean, adding superfoods uh, make a difference. You want one thing about adding superfoods, like I do blue green algae on a regular basis. <clears throat> and um, uh, Celeste alluded to this. You know, the juices, you, you I mean, you're getting good hydration. Uh, you may not always know the good quality of the produce you're getting, the greens and all that stuff. And so adding the superfoods sort of give you that burst of nutrients. Uh, that's always helpful. Uh, but make sure they're foods and make sure they're not you know, uh, process chemical powders and things like that. The ones that, uh, that uh, uh, Varinica, uh, uh, Veronica listed uh, were ideal superfoods. But, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of people may put, you know, herbal supplements with vitamins and all this stuff. You don't want to do that. If you have to take vitamin supplements, next week we'll probably talk about vitamin supplements that you can take, you know, depending on what your issue is, because some people can take vitamin supplements Obviously, you want to have good quality supplements, you know, if but this is more kind of a clinical type thing. If people, you know, have certain ailments or if you're working out and you have inflammation, you can have super nutrients like MSN and all that. And we'll talk about that in our next segment. So one thing I want to do is I want to apologize to our current listeners and also some people are not on because when I posted this, I discovered there was a technical error in the posting. I actually put March 4th on this instead of March 5th. So I think a lot of people were on last night looking for the show when it was actually supposed to be on tonight. I had to make that change for the posting. And so we'll make sure that that is corrected next time. Uh, so I think a lot of our routine listeners missed out. And uh, I'll make sure we do a program note on Fresh Natural Live and uh, send the link to the show to them uh, who may have missed it. Any final comments, any words of wisdom, any final wisecracks uh, as we chime out tonight, your first week? You regret doing this, Sean, or not? I don't regret it at all. I'm going to be honest. You know, listening to everybody, I feel like I was the weak link, you know. But I I, I think I'm the biggest foodie. I am definitely a foodie. And uh, doing it as a part, doing it with, with Taurus here at the, ho at the house, it has been like, it, I'm going to be honest, that's probably my motivation. I mean, I take my hat off to Desi, who's doing it. And on the other hand, still cooking at home, you know, for a husband smelling food. I mean, it would just be a challenge. So going, I'm looking forward to my second week because doc, you say, you say day 10, 12, I'm going to feel good. I'm not going to think about food. I'm not going to think about chewing. So I'm going to wait and I'm going to call you out if I, if I'm still <laughs> good and good. And if I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I want to have all this energy. But I plan to start working out 
next week, I do want to just, you know, on my treadmill, just something like I'm going to add and incorporate that. And Celeste, speaking of you, I just want to chime this in. You were talking about the juices. Uh, because our first couple of days, we were drinking like three, four bottles a piece. We went to Whole Foods and just bought all of this juice. But now day four or five is down to like two, three, maybe like two, three bottles a day. Like we're not drinking hardly as much. So we do have quite a few juice bottles in the refrigerator already ready for this weekend because we're not going to go on that side of town. Um, so you said shelf life. What What is no? I'm not, I guess I need to read the shelf life. I was just doing every two or three days. Uh, it's, what's, it's like? what's at the top? Oh, okay, okay, I can't. Yeah. I can't. No, I can't see. Oh wait, yes, I can. Okay, it says three twenty-two. So March twenty-second. Yeah. So I, I'm just making a comparison because when you juice things at home, it may last about three or four days. Then it starts to kind of ferment. Uh -huh. um, and then some juices from some stores they have a date on it that you can tell it was made on that day, and then it has a date a sell by day, uh -huh. which is going to probably start to ferment, mm -hmm. but that particular one goes way longer than the others so i'm just wondering like well how are they making it preserve that exactly, exactly. Um, yeah exactly. so whenever i have questions like that i just say celeste if you question it then you can do something to fix it so do something to fix it for yourself since you're questioning it mm, that's a good point that's a good point we have about 12 bottles we're gonna drink it for a minute and, not, and it's gonna have fur on it we're gonna drink <laughs> <laughs> if it's got fur on it, it'll really clean you out, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, but really, I guess that's on the way to a kombucha, right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Fermenting, yeah. A little yeah. bit of alcohol. Yeah. Wow, wow. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a great thank you guys for your comments. Uh, I'm going to meet you guys backstage. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, kind of have a final words of. Um, uh, wisdom here. The thing is that, you know, what we tried to share with you today is, you know, our insight to our personal experience and getting started on the juice feast. Uh, you know, these things can be challenging, but they're more mentally challenging than anything else. And we want to kind of take you through our journey to give you some insight in terms of what we're experiencing. One thing I hope you took away from this is that, you know, one is different for everybody. And we all come in with different mindsets and a different mood and different take. Some people are more anxious about it. Some people are more easygoing. Uh, we all had different experiences in terms of how we prepared uh, and how the first week treated. Some was more tired. I was kind of more tired during the week. My workouts were more sluggish. You know, some people went through and had more energy. So there's a whole spectrum of responses to this. But one consistency that you find is that everybody's just overall feeling better. Uh, and some of the people who are in our group went on tonight have shared with me that, hey, you know, uh, it's tough, but something's good is happening to my body. And so, you know, it's always a good experience. And, and what Chef Babette shared is that we need to clean ourselves out. It's sort of a spring cleaning. And so by removing regular food uh, and just nourishing our bodies with uh, super juices and superfoods is really a great way to detox and cleanse. And don't do it for just two or three days. We're all shooting for at least 30 days. We may even go longer. Uh, we'll keep you posted uh, as to our journey. Uh, but but uh, either way, to all of you, we hope that you know this has been very insightful. Uh, tune in next Friday at 745, and we'll kind of continue our journey as we've gone through week two. I'll also share some more uh, bits and facts about juicing uh, and detox and cleansing uh, to give you some more insight from a scientific uh, standpoint. So until next time, detox me now. We look forward to seeing you next Friday night.